Welcome to Life-Giving Water Messages, where I expound upon the Word of God and through the internet deliver it to you. Today's message is part five of a five-part series entitled The Inn, and the specific title of this message is Heart Hotel, and it is based on Revelation chapter 3, verses 14 through 22. Let us dive into the Word today. Write this letter to the angel of the church in Laodicea. This is the message from the one who is the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of God's new creation. I know all things you do, that you are neither hot nor cold. I wish that you were one or the other, but since you are like lukewarm water, neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. You say, I am rich, I have everything I want, I don't need a thing. And you don't realize that you are wretched, and miserable, and poor, and blind, and naked. So I advise you to buy gold from me, gold that has been purified by fire. Then you will be rich. Also buy white garments from me, so you will not be shamed by your nakedness and ointment for your eyes so you will be able to see. I correct and discipline everyone I love, so be diligent and turn from your indifference. Look, I stand at the door and knock. If you hear my voice and open the door, I will come in, and we will share a meal together as friends. Those who are victorious will sit with me on my throne, just as I was victorious and sat with my father on his throne. Anyone with ears to hear must listen to the Spirit and understand what he is saying to the churches. Amen. Ouch! Right? I mean, these are some pretty stark words coming from our Lord Jesus Christ, are they not? But since you are like lukewarm water, neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. Ouch. Every year, between 60,000 and 200,000, that's a pretty wide window, but every year, between 60,000 and 200,000 people will die from a medical condition known as deep vein thrombosis. Usually, the DVT occurs uh, in a person's legs where blood has pooled, uh, allowing a blood clot to form. Once formed, the danger is that the clot might circulate to the lungs. It might dislodge in the veins and circulate to the lungs or brain where it can cause respiratory uh, failure or a stroke. The tragic thing about DVTs is that they are not caused by anything other than simply being inactive. Simply sitting or laying down too long is all it takes for one of these clots to form and dislodge. And my friends, the reality is is that the church finds itself in this situation where we've remained inactive for far too long. And we have developed spiritual DVT. The church, especially in America and the Western world, has been in a state of inertia for generations. Now, how did this happen? Simple. We grew complacent. We grew to be the majority religion, to be the most important, the most privileged in society. There was a day and age where if you didn't go to church on Sunday, you didn't go anywhere because of blue laws which banned businesses being open on Sundays, at least in America. We had prayers in school, at public meetings, in courtrooms, and there was social pressures for families to go to church. Those who did not were outcast. And, truth be told, I as a pastor, and I'm sure many other pastors can, can, uh, can uh, vouch for this, I can't tell you the amount of times I've heard church members lament that they wish things would go back to those times where religion was forced on people 
and you had to go. Where prayer was forced on people and you had to pray. Now, most importantly, the church grew to think that its purpose was to grow its membership and take care of of its members, and that is an unfortunate reality that has not died off in the church, where we think that we have to grow our membership and take care of our members, and where the church's most sacred mission was to get people to come to the church building to worship. The more, the merrier. The church has long embodied the motto uh, from Field of Dreams, If we build it, they will come. In its complacency, in its complacency, the church turned from an outward missional mindset to an inward missional mindset. It's not about others. It's about us. It's not about them. It's not about those people. It's about our people. It's about me, myself, and I. And its members got consumeristic, picking and choosing what part of God they wanted to keep and what part of God they wanted to be rid of. Seriously, think about this. We ordered parts of Christ as if they were for sale a la carte on on a dollar menu. I would like to buy $3 worth of God, please. Not enough to explode my soul or disturb my sleep. Just enough to order a cup of warm milk. I don't want so much of God as to make me love someone who is different than me or pick beets with a migrant, let alone welcome them in. After all, they don't belong here. I want ecstasy, not transformation. I want warmth of the womb, not new birth. I want a quarter pound of the eternal in a paper bag with some napkins and fries, please. I would like to buy $3 worth of God, please. Now, that particular quote that I just read to you, uh, I don't want to take credit for something I didn't personally write, but um, but that is that hits the na- the nail right on the head. It really does. Uh, That was from uh, Wilbur Rees. Uh, I altered it a little bit, but that, that that just hits the nail right on the head. Sisters and brothers, that is not the church that we've grown comfortable in. It's our complacency. We've been worshiping our own comfort and convenience over Christ the Lord. What's Jesus' response to our complacency? Listen up. I know all the things you do, that you are neither hot nor cold. I wish that you were one or the other, but since you are lukewarm, like lukewarm water, neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. Revelation chapter 3, verses 15 through 16. My friends, that is Jesus' warning to us. But it need not get to that. For Jesus follows it, and this is good news, Jesus follows it with an invitation, which brings us full circle in this message series. In verses chapter 19 through 20, Jesus lovingly invites us into a deeper and more committed relationship. I correct and discipline everyone I love. So be diligent and turn from your indifference. Look, I stand at the door and knock. If you hear my voice and open the door, I will come in and we will share a meal together as friends. Revelation chapter 3, verses 19 through 20. Sisters and brothers, fellow Christ followers, we have 
a choice today. This choice presents itself to us in e- presents itself to us in every moment as well as every day. Will we open the doors of our heart hotel to Jesus? Or will we shut the door and tell him, Nope, no room here, not in this inn. No vacancy. It's either one or the other. And I want you to understand this because we in the Western world, we in America, we like to have it our way. We like to have our cake and eat it too, right? We want it one way and we want it only that way. But it's either one or the other when it comes to Jesus. We're either going to welcome him in or we're going to shut the door and tell him, nope, no room here, no vacancy. It's either one or the other. Because there is no consumerism in Christ. You, can, you either accept all of Christ or none of Christ. Let us be challenged by this in this coming new year. Let us be transformed by Christ and fully engaged in his mission to transform this world into God's kingdom. My friends, this new year, let us make time for Christ. Let us grow deeper and let us grow warmer in our love of Christ and embody the work that Christ has created us to do. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, you have challenged us this morning to open our hearts to you. There you are knocking, Lord, knocking at the door and waiting for us to recognize your voice and to welcome you in. But Lord, I fear that we have we have grown so cold and so distant from you that we we may not even recognize your voice anymore. Lord, remind us of who you are. Help us to grow acquainted with you once again so that we may, when you knock at our, at our door, we may open it up and welcome you in and feast with you as friends. Lord, we know you are working in us and we trust that you are guiding us from where we are to where you have called us to be. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. I'd like to thank you for uh, tuning in and joining me uh, for this uh, message. Again, it's part five of a five-part series called The Inn, an Advent series. And um, and this specific message was Heart Hotel. And that concludes the the series, The Inn. It also, uh, it's noteworthy to to put out there that this is the last, the last uh, episode in 2018. We got, our show got started this year, uh, back in February, uh, and this is the last show in February 18th. The next one will be out in, uh, you know, next Sunday, a week from now, uh, which will be 2019. Isn't that hard to believe? Anyway, my friends, um, I'd like to invite you to check out all of our websites, and um, yeah, remember, you are blessed, so be a blessing to others. Amen. Go in peace.